Are you ready? Okay. And action. Like at, at some point, do go all the way yeah. to the to the to the rightmost side. Okay. All right, so we are here on the set of the text. The text. Yes. The Prince George Ballroom in New York City. And uh, this is our first time collaborating on a short film. Um, so, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Oh my god, I love them. They were the reason why I wanted to start tap dancing. Um, I was obsessed with them when I was 18. I loved them. I loved Ginger Rogers. I thought she was like the coolest. And I wanted to be her. As a matter of fact, my prom, I got a dress that sort of kind of resembled her um, <laughs> Queen time. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. It looks nothing like it, but in my mind, I was like, I'm ginger today. <laughs> it was awesome. What did you um, love about them? Well, I mean, I my mom introduced me to um, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers when I was seven years old because I did a tap solo mm -hmm. to um, the song Top Hat. So she purchased that at that time VHS okay. of Top Hat and uh, you know for me I, all my um, dance teachers were were women mm -hmm. so it was really cool to have someone to look up to mm -hmm. you know being Fred Astaire you know as a uh, male role model in dancing and so you know where for you as Ginger Rogers for me it was definitely Fred Astaire I was I had never you know, conceive like, you know, when you're a kid, you're doing Irishes and yeah, Buffaloes yeah. as a little kid. You know, I didn't even conceive that you could even dance like that. So it was. And how old were you? Seven. Seven? Wow. Yeah. So. I was much older. Yeah, but. 17. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for, but for, I guess for both of us, yeah. that's such a, an influence at the start of mm -hmm. what we both started as tap dancers is very early on for us, such a big, yeah. overwhelming influence. Yeah, they were the reason. Um, what about, because I know that we're doing Fred and Ginger, but we're not really doing Fred and Ginger. Uh, I know you listen to a ton of music, as do I. Talk, let's talk about this recording. Right, so uh, the recording that we're using is uh, Oscar Peterson's arrangement of Cheek to Cheek, which actually we never really had Fred and Ginger in mind mm -hmm. when we started the dance. The only right. reason we started the, the piece a couple of years ago is just because mutually we we're just like, wow, that's a really beautiful arrangement of Cheek to Cheek, mm -hmm. which happens to be one of um, Fred, Fred and Ginger's, you know, iconic dances, yeah. iconic, you know, ballroom pieces mm -hmm. where they, which they tap a little bit in. So, and Oscar's amazing. Mm -hmm. the, his musicality, and just his arrangements of his songs are just beautiful. There are times when I'm teaching classes to his music where I just, I'll just say, okay, everybody just stop. We're just gonna listen to this lick. Uh, okay, let's go now. <laughs> you know, because it's just uh, so, like, so sophisticated. Mm. I wanna ask you um, how you feel like women in terms of dance, you know, the, the relationship between, you know, uh, Fred and Ginger and their dance mm -hmm. is very much, we've talked about a little bit, like the social, you know, construct of the time, mm -hmm. you know, the relationship between men and women. Right. And in our, in our dance, I think it very much is a reflection oh, of yes. the relationship between how, you know, men and women, how that social const construct has changed. Yeah. Can you, can you talk well, to I that think, a little bit? Yeah, I, I, think, I think what you're referring to is, um, you know, I think in the 30s, which is when Top Hat, and most of those musicals were, right. were made, 
I think there was an idealistic, romanticized view of male-female relationships. And so it was always the ingenue and, you know, the dapper fella who was going to get the girl. Right. And, the, you know, and they really, really played to that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, not that that doesn't necessarily work now, but I think there's way more freedom in our society and, and certainly a lot more equality of, mm -hmm. amongst the gen you know, between the genders. So um, I think that what's happened now is that we are... You know, I feel like, you know, equals coming mm -hmm. together. Absolutely. Um, and nothing, the, the female is not playing into any role. We're both dancing to the best of our strengths. And um, I think that's what has changed. Mm -hmm. Because it existed then. Because remember when Eleanor Powell that's did, um, she, when she danced with Fred Astaire. He did Broadway Melody in right. 1940. And I remember even then, before I started tap dancing, thinking, wow, She's that's never gonna happen again because right. she was really his equal. I felt right. you when know. he didn't want to want to dance with her after that. He oh yeah, because he he felt threatened that she was mm -hmm. stealing his thunder, so to speak. Right, and he didn't want to be shown up by anybody mm -hmm. on screen, and so that was the one and all, which is sad to a degree. But I mean, mm -hmm. I guess on the other hand, we have you know that one iconic pairing of the two of them, mm -hmm. which is another. You know, great partner right. for, um, but it would have been great to see them make ten films the same I know. as you know, you know Fred and Ginger. Now that she wasn't a great dance, she was a great partner for him. Mm -hmm. But they, to see them because she was a, I think Eleanor was a better tap dancer for sure than Ginger was. Right? Yeah, you know? she had things. They both had, had their strengths. Yeah, had their strengths. Right. Mm -hmm. For for sure. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Like, how do you feel being in your role here? Well, I I think that there's something about the relationship that we have together doing the piece that is very much um, is very similar in terms of the camp, to just the joy and just being mm -hmm. spending time yeah. together. I think that's universal, like what Fred and Ginger had and what we have when we do our dance. Right. But I do feel that everything that you do, or everything I do, you do, yeah. which wasn't the case so much in those mm, dances. Yeah, he right. was leading her through those dances. Right. He was the dominant partner and mm -hmm. she was submissive to him. Right. And I, I think that really in our dance that there is no leader or follower. Mm -hmm. We're just enjoying the music, we're enjoying the dance. And I think that that is, is something that ha has changed definitely with, you know, if we're talking 85 years that have gone by the, the right. way that society has changed. You know, I, and I think that's, it really is a sign of how things are unchanging and things constantly change and change rapidly. Right. So, um, I think it's really cool, though. I love it. Thanks for uh, stopping by and joining our conversation. Uh, you can leave any comments you want to further to talk with Ayadeli and I about anything that we talked about. And uh, we only good comments. Only, yeah, only <laughs> And uh, we hope that you enjoy the film. Rehearsal action. Do you see when you see the red thing? It's recording. Okay. Okay. You have this? Okay, so I have to obviously change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, how does that look? Better? Yeah. Who's your favorite dancer? You are. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's higher. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. All right.